everyone and welcome to non-local means based free time lecture. My name is Olivier Rukundo. I am project researcher at the University of Eastern Finland. Today I want to demonstrate the non-local means based filtering of gray scale and color images. Here I can briefly remind you that the non-local means based filtering is one of interesting and important image filtering techniques that works best for Gaussian noise. In an image, this algorithm looks where similar patches are, does some calculations and assign weights accordingly. And in general, similar patches get high weights while the similar patches get low weights. And in this lecture, I am generally going to focus on the MATLAB built-in function and later I will comment on transmission electron microscopy and capsulendoscopy images denoised or cleaned using the traditional non-local means based filtering technique. Now let's start by displaying the built-in functions details using the edit command. Edit space IMNLM FIL enter um, as can be seen here here we can read that this situation applies a non-local means based filter to the input image of the size m by n and in real life this can be a gray scale or a color image and in that case the minimum size of the image should be 21 by 21 for this non-local means based filter and this can also return the value of the degree of smoothing which corresponds to the standard deviation of Gaussian noise present in the input image and also here We have something that enables us to filter the input image using uh, the name value pairs to control aspects of non-local means filtering. And here uh, it's written that the parameters include the degree of smoothing, search window size, comparison window size. And in brief, the degree of smoothing is a positive integer that controls the amount of smoothing in the output image. And uh, here we have the search window size, which is a positive order integer that defines the size of the square neighborhood to which the search for similar pixel is limited and in this example the search window size can be represented by this black square of the size p by p and again uh, this search window size is very very important because it also affects the performance linearly in terms of time and also here we have comparison window size which is a positive odd integer which specifies the size of the square window surrounding the pixel which is used to compute weights based on similarity of pixels and in this example the window of the size q by q looks like this for example suppose that this is input image that has some noise in it or simply suppose that this is a noisy image now given v that represent this image and here v is function of i and here i can call i this i a set of all pixel elements and i this one this i belongs or is an element of this set i this one and here the question is how do we estimate the new or filtered value of i the answer is shown here and this estimate for the pixel i is computed as 
a weighted average of all pixels in the image. And here we have a family of weights. We also have another pixel j, this one. For example, if i, this i, is equal to 5 and j is equal to 4, in this case, we will have something that looks like this. To define the weight between these two, 5 and 4, we use this equation. And this n sub i is the square neighborhood of fixed size and centered at 5, as shown here. So this neighborhood, it represents this neighborhood. While n sub j, this one, is a squared neighborhood of fixed size and centered at 4, as shown here. So this is the neighborhood of interest, this one. And this a, this a you see here, is a positive value and the standard deviation of the Gaussian kernel. And this is the Gaussian weighted Euclidean distance. And here we have the parameter h that acts as a degree of filtering. And here we have this z of i, which is the normalizing constant, which is given by this equation. Other details, such as conditions to be satisfied, authors' discussions, and so on, can be found in this paper, a non-local algorithm for image denoising, or in many other papers that referred to this paper. Now, let's see how this works on gray scale and color images. Here we start with the, this image here, a gray scale image, and we also use this color image. And this gray scale is from TM, and this is, one is a calcinoscopic image. Here we have input and filtered image, and we can see that the image don't look the same way. And uh, we can see that some of the object in the filtered image are clearer than in the input noise image and uh, the contour of some of the objects in the filtered version they they, are sh they look sharper than in the case of input image and um, textured regions look smaller than in the input image case and um, of course, this results in less details when compared to the noise image. And here we have a difference image from input and, and filtered image that looks like this. Now let's look at the color image. And here we have input and filtered image. And for example, if we get a closer view and get a closer view of noise image, we can see that the edges are smoothed and we can also see that some areas such as this one here it is not visible in the field of the image yeah. so it has not been sharpened by simply looking because here you can see something there's something here is missing it's hard to imagine we can still see something this one here and uh, let's look at the difference image and the difference image also looks like this now let's take another example so in this example um, the first impression is that the filtered image and input image they don't look the same way this is clear and if we look at the difference image, we can also see that by looking at the dif difference image, the input and filter image, they also don't look the same way, and the filter image looks smoother than the input image, and some of the details 
are gone. For example, if you look here, you know this structure, it's, it's, it's much better in this version than in this one here, because here it's too blurred and it, 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 is, it, it is not visible. This is a different image from the input and fitted image, so it looks like this. There, there is a difference between the input and fitted image. Now let's look at another example. Here we have input and fitted image and by looking at these images we can see that the image don't look the same way and it is difficult to comment on the details but if we look at the difference image we can see that there is a difference between input and output and, and filtered image. Color images we can see that the input and filter image don't look the same way but this one looks smoother than this one and um, if we get a closer view in this case we can see some of the details still present in the filter image but of course some of the details are hardly visible in this filter image and uh, the difference image looks like this that shows that input and filter image they don't look the same way and here we can take another example in this example here by looking it's difficult to to not to see the difference between the filtered and input image and the difference image can show that they resist the difference so sometimes it's difficult to see until we use a difference image which shows that the two images are different if you look at capsulendoscopy images, which are color images, you can see that the input and filter image do not look the same way. And that you can see that in the filtered version, many details are gone. Many details that are present in input images are gone, are smooth. And a few of them, they remain, such as this something here, this one here. It's still there, but these the other small details they have gone and this is the difference image that shows that there is a difference between the input and filtered image now this is the end of the lecture thank you